And welcome to another edition of our International Sunday School Lesson. And today's lesson is lesson number three for the summer quarter 2017, June the 18th, 2017. And it's taken from the book of Judges, the 11th chapter, verses 4 through 11 and 29 through 31. And it is on the judge Jephthah. And to be quite frank and honest with you, I find this the one of some of the most difficult passages in the Bible, the story of Jephthah. Uh, there's some unique things happen. It's the only time it happens in the entire Bible. And like I said, it is a very difficult section of scriptures to really definitively understand what is going on. Okay? The... We see, as we have mentioned several times, how that the children of Israel, they would uh, backslide, go into apostasy, and God would turn them over to some group, and they would be put into subjection. And we see, once again, that situation has happened. And the children of Israel had went into apostasy and God had uh, let the Ammonites uh, put them under subjection. And Jephthah is a little bit, not a little bit, he is a unique, um, holds a unique place among the judges. Uh, all the other judges, when we read the story, we see how that God called the judges, that particular judge, into their office. But Jephthah is being called by the people uh, to serve as a leader. Okay? Starting off, Judges 11, 4 through 6. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader that we may fight against the Ammonites. And it seems very promising or very likely in reading these scriptures that Jephthah had distinguished himself among the people as a great general in the time of war. So the Ammonites were waging war against Israel, and they had sought out Jephthah to assist them and lead them in making a defense against the Ammonites. And that is, as I said, most likely because Jephthah had already distinguished himself and had a certain level of fame among them as a leader in time of warfare. And we also see that the Israelites apparently did not have much trouble raising up the people to fight. They just didn't have any good rulers to pick out to lead them in combat. Okay. 
Now, the seventh verse. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? So, Jephthah had been more or less discarded by these, uh, by the children of Israel and had been driven out of his father's house and thrown away pretty much well as a castaway during uh, this time. And he brings it up to the children of Israel, how that now that they're in trouble, they come and get him. But when things were going well, they didn't want to have anything to do with him. And all of us, all of us have had that situation occur. Um, I mean, it happens. Uh, I mean, it's happened in my life before, you know, where people didn't want to have anything to do with you until they needed something from you, and then they would come and get you and forget the fact that they left you high and dry and get you to try to help them. And it does... um, hurt your feelings even more when that happens. And it's only natural to bring that up to somebody and say, look, you didn't want me when you didn't, when you wasn't in trouble. Now I'm real important to you. And that's exactly what Jephthah is doing here. Okay? Okay. Then the 8th and 10th verse, And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again, to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. Now, this is the first contractual agreement in this story. And this one is doesn't have nowhere near the dire consequences as the next one does. But we see how that they had promised Jephthah that if he comes back and helps them with this battle, that he is going to um, be their leader. That's what he says. He is his interpretation of the bargain. And they make an oath to him to do that. Now, let me take a side statement here. um, How that the scriptures in the New Testament talk about how Christians uh, should not be making oaths. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. And that is something that we all need to be aware of and to take to heart. It is contrary to Christian uh, ethics to what the New Testament teaches for us to be making oaths about matters. Okay? Now... Judges, the 11th chapter, 11th verse. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, 
and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jetha spoke all these words before the Lord at Mizpah. And we know, which is not part of the verses, um, not part of the verses that we've got here, uh, how that the uh, the oath that Jephthah gave before God and the troubling consequences of it. Okay, the 29th verse, jumping down, And the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed on to Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed on to the Ammonites. So the Spirit of the Lord did come upon uh, Jephthah. And we know how that in the book of Hebrews, he is named as one of the mighty uh, heroes of faith. And the Spirit of the Lord truly did come upon Jephthah. And even though that the leaders of the land had more or less recruited him, how that God was going to deliver the children of Israel from the Ammonites using Jephthah. And the Spirit of God did come upon him. Now this is starting in the 30th verse. This is two of the most, in my opinion, the two of the most troubling uh, verses in the Bible. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will give the Ammonites unto my hand. Okay, down to the 31st verse. Then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the Ammonites, shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Now, we know from the additional verses in this section of Scripture that the Lord did do that. He delivered the Ammonites to Jephthah's hand. And as he came back, his only daughter was the first thing that came out of the door of his house. And it grieved Jephthah where he had made this rash vow. Now, there are a couple of things that I am very sure about. Okay? First thing, and it's borne out all through the entire Bible, is that Jephthah, under no circumstances, should have offered his daughter as a burnt sacrifice. Now, there have been uh, some people who have made the uh, case that Jephthah actually did not offer his daughter as a burnt offering, but that she was to be dedicated as a virgin attendant in the temple. But that's not what the scripture clearly states. That's not if you go back to the Septuagint. That is not how the Septuagint clearly states the matter. It is not reasonable to me to try to twist the scriptures 
to say that Jephthah did not offer his did not murder his daughter and make her a sacrifice. He did. It is also a true statement because it's what the scripture clearly says that Jephthah, the Spirit of God, had come upon him and given him the victory, given him the victory over the Ammonites. Now, the thing that the Bible does not say under any circumstances, and I refuse to accept, is that it was the correct thing because Jephthah, Jephthah made that vow that it was the correct thing for him to offer a human sacrifice. I believe Jephthah was supposed to have broken his vow at that point. If once he found himself in that situation. I also believe Jephthah was in the wrong in making that vow in the first place. It is a dangerous thing to try to make these kind of deals with God. You cannot make a deal with God. He's always on the giving end. There's nothing you have that you can trade God. People will sit there and they'll say, Well, God, if you heal Mama, I will start going to church. Well, God, if you uh, give me that new job, I will uh, teach a Sunday school class. And they try to make these deals with God like they can bargain with Him. And you cannot bargain with God. Because this is the simple matter of it, is that God is always giving to you. He is the supplier of all your needs. There's nothing you can do that will, uh, that will pay God back for what he gives to you. And the thing that he expects out of us is our entire being. He expects it all. Okay? So, let's not try to make any kind of deals or bargains with God. And a lot of times, what you'll see out of people is they'll make these deals and these bargains with God, and then after the um, deliverance comes, they don't, you know, they don't ever follow through on them. And that does happen. But this is one instance <laughs> that that bargain should not have been gone through with. You know, there is no justification for what Je Jephthah did. Um, but anyhow, well, friends, you keep watching YouTube, and next weekend we will be back, good Lord willing.